There is nothing else like it on earth, or maybe even in heaven. It stretches for 725 miles, and it's called the California Coastline. There are over 4 million miles of roads in Alamo territory, all across America. And nationwide, Alamo's the only company that can give you all those miles for free, including the ones where the people bask in the sun and watch the seals, and the seals bask in the sun and watch the people. to taste something truly sensational, just look for the NutraSweet Swirl. You start me up, don't ever quit. You just sweet the one, give me just a bit. I want to taste so oh yeah. NutraSweet, why so many things taste so good. When you get pizza delivered, remember you're paying for uniforms, insurance, gas, and of course... Tip. Delivery costs. Now at Little Caesars, you get two great pizzas for six eighty-eight. Pan Pan. Only at Little Caesars. To prove there's nothing like minute rice, look at all the fast dishes Gladys has made. Minute rice lemon chicken, minute rice oriental, minute rice primavera, saucy peas, minute rice, minute rice pf, minute for rice... For any pepper, fast recipe, rice. reliable minute rice is light and fluffy in five minutes. The other national instant is soupy. Great, Gladys, but what about dessert? So I said to Principal Muskie, if I had never pulled the fire alarm, how would we know if it worked? And he didn't buy it? Steve, the man's office has no windows. It's had a tragic effect on his imagination. Well, cheer up, compadre. Friday night's the night. What's going on? A bunch of us are going to run a stretch limo and cruise for women. Stretch limo? Whatever happened to Dougie's van? The one with Heather Locklear paint on the side? That's history, Ross. Turn the page. A stretch limo, however, is a love magnet. How do you know? This is not my first limo. Last Friday, we cruised for five hours, and you know who saw us? Who? Melinda Beecham. Get out! Where was she? In front of her house, taking out her garbage. Man. Well, anyway, I, I can't make it. I'm broke. Why don't you get some money from your parents? Oh, like I haven't asked. <laughs> My parents give me whatever I ask for. Steve, your parents are divorced. I don't have those advantages. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was being insensitive. The bottom line is, when we were kids, fun was cheap. We're adults now. Ciao. <laughs> Later. Dad, <laughs> fancy meeting you here. What a treat. Yeah. Been minutes. We don't get to spend enough time together, Dad. I mean, quality time. Let's bond. Ross, I know when I'm being manipulated. And I often like it, but I've got a lot to do right now. But I need your advice. Hey, your mom's free. Bond with her. But, but I need love advice. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? I tried to, Dad. You see, I can't talk to mom about this stuff. She's not a guy. You say that again. Well, you've come to the source. What's the problem? Dad, I'm gonna lay all my cards on the table. I'm in love. Who's the lucky girl? Someone at school. Melinda Beecham. I'm madly, passionately in love with her. She's the only woman for me. What's she like? I have no idea. <laughs> Did I miss something? Oh, well, I've never actually talked to her. I've mainly been following her around the school, keeping a safe distance, sort of like her personal secret service agent. <laughs> she doesn't even know I exist. It's quite a beautiful thing, really. Well, uh, Ross, based on what you've told me, I really think you ought to talk to Melinda and get to know her. Dad, this is why I've come to you. You're Dr. Love. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that exactly, but... Uh... Well, let's just say I've broken a few hearts in my time. So is that all the advice you needed? Pretty much, Dad. Oh, uh, just one more thing. What's that? Can I have a hundred bucks to rent a stretch limo? What? Dad, you and I are on the cusp of the 1990s. Nowadays, if you want to get a woman's attention, you know, you've got to flash some money around. Ross, if you want to impress Melinda Beecham, impress her with yourself. A relationship based on money is going to be superficial and sleazy. Well, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> Justin, next time you want to knock the bark off a tree, it's probably a good idea 
not to use your face. Woody Woodpecker does it. No, Woody Woodpecker also eats worms. Wow, he has all the fun. What can I tell you? He's a woodpecker. So he married Yoko and the band broke up. And now it's time for your nap. Uh, Justin, your mom's out front. Can I sing a lullaby to Emily? Sure. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> Hi, right, Eileen. I'm going to take Emily up for a nap. Uh, better you than me. Well, does anyone notice anything different about me? Could it be my deep, dark, expensive Caribbean tan? That's a clue. How was your trip? It's wonderful. I wound up going to Clubba Hubba on the island of St. Chuck. It's a cutest little nation, kind of a nationette, really. Oh, it's ruled by this charming little fascist man. <laughs> Sounds like paradise to me. Sun, sand, human rights violations. Well, wait, I've seen that place on TV. You can't use any money there, right? Yeah, that's right. You pay for all your food and drinks with beads that you wear around your neck. Yeah, that was the only part of the trip that really stunk. I mean, if you can't wave some cash around and make other people miserable, then why leave home? But on day three, it came to me. What if I started buying other people's beads? Oh, I can see how that would help you relax. Oh, yeah, it did, it did. I mean, at first I just bought two beads from him, three beads from her. Nobody suspected anything until day five, when I owned all the beads on the island. I mean, the minute that bar opened, people were begging me for beads. There were fist fights, there were bidding wars. The cabana boy had to hold them all at bay with a grapefruit knife. <laughs> all I can tell you is I came out of that vacation four thousand dollars richer eileen you're amazing oh i wouldn't say amazing attractive perhaps no no no. what i mean is what's the secret to making money frost millionaires are no smarter than you or i they've just learned a simple system of capitalizing on their opportunities just got off the phone with kevin and nina they want to treat us to dinner after their parents conference could you tell them it wouldn't influence our evaluation and blow dinner? You must be joking. Boss, am I hearing things, or did opportunity just knock-a-dee-knock? -knock? What? Oh, you're fast. A money-making opportunity is staring you in the face. Now think, Ross, what do Kevin and Nina have? Volvo? No, a child. Millie, right? Molly. Yeah, who cares? Anyway, Kevin and Nina are going out to dinner with your parents. Nobody's taking care of little what's-her-face. So think, Ross, how can you use this opportunity to make money? Ross, when you were a baby, we used to hire people to sit with you. Take your time. Babysit? Oh, you are a good boy. Good boy. And they lived happily ever after. Man, that goose could write. <laughs> Read me another one, Mal. Okay. Well, the parents' conference is almost over. I recommended Molly see a psychologist. Is something wrong with her? Oh, no. I just think it's never too early to start. <laughs> How's this going? Kristen, this gig is golden. I, I figure 15 kids uh, means 15 conferences multiplied by three hours each time is $3 an hour equals, uh, well, I think a lot of money. Why are you so concerned about money all of a sudden? Feeling inadequate? Kristen, please. <laughs> Adequate is my middle name. You know, but money's important to women. Look, when you were my age, didn't you go for guys with money? Oh, gee, Ross, you're taking me back four years now. <laughs> But, if I remember correctly, money wasn't important to me at all. I had a boyfriend who was gentle, sensitive, funny. Actually, a little like you. Whatever happened to him? He moved away. His dad's Jaguar dealership closed. <laughs> Bye. So overall, then, what would you say Molly's grade is? 
Kevin, you know we don't give out grades here. Oh, come on, Kevin. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was silly of me. It's just that I want to be sure that Molly's progressing well. well she absolutely is. Uh, uh, she works well with other children. She's inquisitive. She's curious. Her cognitive and motor skills are right on track for her age. Okay. Hey! <laughs> um, uh, before you depart for the evening, there is a little matter of uh, payment to be discussed, a matter of the fee, a matter of negotiation to be conducted. Well, how's ten bucks sound to you? Holy cow, that's a lot. Ross, now a couple of things about Molly. She shouldn't eat anything later than seven o'clock. Otherwise, she has terrible nightmares about the Muppet Babies. Oh, hey, same here. She should be in her PJs by eight, and here are her multiplication flashcards. But don't overdo it, just until she nods off. Molly, honey, you got an A! <laughs> well, Ross, uh, this babysitting plan of yours is very enterprising. I gotta admit, I'm proud. Well, that's what I'm here for, Mom. To make you beam. We were the shiniest parents in the world right now. And I've done my job. Good night, Ross. Why were you ignoring me? To teach you some manners. <laughs> Don't ever do that! You always say that. <laughs> the stretch almost fueled and ready to go. We're gonna cruise for an hour, then hit the clubs. I can't do it! I'm gonna say two words to you, Ross. Love magnet. Well, I've got two words for you, pal. Babysitting. I have been employed to take care of this child for the evening, and that is a sacred trust. I will not, I shall not betray it. Feed her by seven, PJs by eight, flesh cards till she drops. I'm gonna say two more words to you, Ross. Melinda Beecham. Grab the cards, Molly. We're out of here. <laughs> I did not forget the baby. Yes, you did. I bet I had a dozen shades of rose blusher and I was still looking for the right one. Clarion makeup. So when I saw the Clarion computer, I thought, great. It'll tell me the perfect rose. Turns out my best colors don't have a rose in the bunch. No wonder I was never satisfied. Clarion, ultra pure makeup, personalized for you. Look. Any makeup can put roses on your cheeks. This one tells you when they don't belong there. Clarion, looking great and knowing it. Cross the road, cross the road. Cross the road to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Only one place has the Colonel's original recipe of 11 herbs and spices, and it's just across the road. Cross the road to Kentucky Fried Chicken, yeah. Cross the road. Can one light mayonnaise taste that much better? A nationwide taste test proves the best tasting light is Hellman's Light. Naturally warm. It's Hellman's. Hellman's Light Mayonnaise. With half the calories, bring out the best. On Alf, the car mysteriously blows a fuse. Horn work. Sending Alf undercover. Yo, crook! To take a picture of a dishonest mechanic. You got took. And on Hogan's family, the boys go on a late night adventure. I'm not even wearing clean underwear. Without permission. We both are in major trouble. And learn a special lesson. It's an all-new night, Monday. On night court, it's four men and a baby. I think I need a short recess. Whoa! Stay down! Fresh air is near the floor! And Dan's got the booby prize. Then... On My Two Dads, it's a naughty night class. I'm Janet, and I want to explode sexually. And, uh, you. I'd like Janet to explode on me. All new laughs, Wednesday. Uh, it's not a real baby. It's a radio. Boss, 
was supposed to hold the door open for me. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, I don't get out very much. I'm beginning to see why. <laughs> Ladies, may I interest you in a uh, little fat yogurt? I have a limousine. Drop dead. Hey, babies. Very hip choice. <laughs> Whose are they? Uh, mine. Where's the mother? Well, actually, there are uh, two different mothers. <laughs> you know, I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't impressed. <laughs> they are so cute. Are you babysitting? Uh, well, <laughs> sort of. No, I think that's great that you like kids. I actually find that attractive in a man. Well, so do I. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the jerks that are here tonight. This one fathead tried bragging about his limousine. Oh, what a child. I, I weep for my gender. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay, Molly, Emily, let's do some babysitting. Once upon a time, Goldilocks and the three little pigs... We do the song at school. Let's dance. My thoughts exactly. Come on, Emily. do look awful. Hope I die before I get old. Whoa, check it out. It's Melinda Beach. She looks even better without her garbage. Hey, and she's coming right over here. She's looking right at me. Hey, pal, she was looking at me. Dream on. She's looking at me. Those are the cutest little girls. Whose are they? Whoa, what's boss? Wait a minute, aren't you Ross Harper? That's right. You know, you always follow me around in school. That's right. Why didn't I? I never talk to you, do I? That's right. Are you babysitting? That's right. <laughs> I babysit all the time. Uh, me too, constantly. Then I guess we have something in common. What? Babysitting. Of course, babysitting. <laughs> can I play with them? Sure. You can name them. Hey, wait a minute. I've got a baby sister. Let's go get her! Come on. <laughs> oh, thanks for a wonderful dinner. Such a treat to spend an evening with adults. Talk about something besides childcare. Yeah. Oh, you know what you guys should see? This new movie, Crossing Delancey. It's a little movie, but it is so well done. You know, it almost reminded me of Moonstruck. Oh, I loved Moonstruck. Did you love Moonstruck? Uh-huh. Can we talk more about Molly? Sure. Great. Like, I don't know exactly how to put this, but is Molly ever a, a, a discipline problem in school? Oh, no. No, in fact, when we have to discipline one of the other children, Molly volunteers to help. <laughs> I mean, what do we do if she stays up past her bedtime? Do we punish her? Kevin, we have a little saying at the preschool. Blame the act, not the child. You should express your displeasure with what she's done, but not with her. That's been our secret with Ross. You two know so much about parenting. Well, we're in the kid biz, Nina. And Ross is our floor model. Our spring merchandise is coming in soon. <laughs> you know, one time Ross... Uh, well, was... I guess we better get Molly and yeah, go. Yeah, I guess so. Where is Molly? Ross! <laughs> Headphones. <laughs> What are you doing here? My, aren't we friendly? I got an attack of the munchies, so I traipsed on over. No one was here, but the back door was unlocked. Very considerate touch, I thought. Glad I didn't have to break a window. Ryan, where's Ross? Where's Molly? Where's the Gouda? What? You guys used to have this enormous wheel of Gouda cheese in here. Oh, oh, that's right. I ate it. It was good. Actually, it was a little riper than I knew. Eileen, we are in the middle of something. Oh, like I'm not? <laughs> Brian, what is going on? Kevin, let's not get alarmed. Ross just probably took the girls out for a while. But where? Well, well did he leave a note? Of course. Well, whenever one of us goes somewhere unexpectedly, we leave a note right here on this pad by the phone, and no, he did not leave a note. <laughs> Brian, this is outrageous. He is supposed to be taking care of our daughter. People try to put us down. Talking about my generation. Hey, guys, what's shaking? A vein in my forehead. It's past your bedtime. You know that, Ross. Good night, Emily. 
Molly, honey, we were so worried about you. Why? We didn't know where you were. I was at a club with Ross. He's the best babysitter in the world. A club? Ross, I am infuriated. I never would have left Molly with you had I known you were so irresponsible. I'm disgusted, Ross. I'm totally disgusted. I want my money back. I spent it all on Molly. Please don't yell at Ross, Daddy. Oh, she's right. Kate and Brian can deal with oh, this. Thanks, Nina. I'm sorry the evening had to end this way. Oh, don't worry about it. You're really going to scream at him, aren't you? It's under control. Dad, uh, just, I, I just, just want to... Just a moment, Ross. What the hell were you thinking of tonight? Brian, 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 please blame the act, not the child. Have you lost your mind, Ross? What's the biggie here? Steve came over. He had a stretch limo. No one could turn that down. But I did my job. The kids were perfectly safe and sound. You are supposed to stay here when you're babysitting, Ross. Well, that's it. Throw a wild card at me. You didn't say that before. What am I, a mind reader? All right, Ross, that does it. You are grounded. You are grounded for the rest of this month. Well, fine. Then there's nothing left to talk about. You wouldn't understand anyway. Mind if I join you? You can do whatever you want, Dad. You're not grounded. Please, pursue happiness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. You're welcome. I guess you better pick up some more of this stuff at the store, huh? Why don't you? Well, Dad, I'm grounded. You know, I cannot leave the compound. Wild dogs will tear at my uniform. <laughs> I understand why you're mad at me, Ross, but you've got to understand why we grounded you. When we came home tonight to this empty house, how do you think we felt? Dad, when I come home to an empty house, I'm thrilled. <laughs> Ross? I'm sorry. Look, Dad, I can see why you and Mom were so worried. And I shouldn't have gone out. I wasn't thinking. But you're one of the smartest people I know. How could you go and do a dumb thing like that? I don't know, Dad. The night was going so well. You know, Molly was reading to me and we, we were having a lot of fun. And then, well, Steve came over. And he said the two magic words. Which are? Melinda Beecham. <laughs> so you did all of this for a girl? Is that shallow? <laughs> yes, Ross, I think that's extremely shallow. And very possibly hereditary. You did really dumb stuff for girls, too? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> Sometimes it even worked. <laughs> well, it worked for me tonight. Oh, yeah? Did... <clears throat> oh, yeah? <laughs> what happened? Dad, I really don't think it's proper for me to divulge the details of my personal life. <laughs> Fair enough. She talked to me. <laughs> Congratulations, that's a big step. But was it worth getting grounded for a whole month? Dad, this whole ugly situation could have been avoided if you'd just given me the money for the limo as I requested. You know, I'm sorry, but those are the facts. I got news for you, Ross. I don't have that kind of money. And if I did, I certainly wouldn't give it to you to spend on limos. You can be a very cruel man, Dad. <laughs> what has gotten into you? This entire week you've been obsessed with impressing a girl with money, and you don't need it. Yes, I do. Why? You may think that I'm one of the smartest people you know, but girls don't see anything in me. Yeah, I walk down the halls. It's like they're looking right through me. You never had it so rough. You, you've got this easy kind of charm about you. Personally, I don't see it, but it's there. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. <laughs> anyway, it's harder for me. You know, and that's why I needed the money, so I'd have something to offer. If you don't have anything to offer, why did Melinda Beecham talk to you tonight? I don't know. But... Well, it sounds stupid. Well, go on. Well, because I was babysitting, I was doing a pretty good job, too. That's the real you, Ross, and that should be enough. It should? Sure! In Melinda's eyes, you probably look uh, sensitive and responsible, and that's all your mother and I are asking you to be. In a very strange way, you're right. <laughs> bet I am! By pleasing your mom and me, you could be pleasing Melinda Beecham. Oh, God, Dad, that's sick! <laughs> what I say? Oh, you know, you know! <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get that out of my head. It's going to take years of psychotherapy. 
What did I say? Uh, never mind. D Let's just drop it. I just want to let you know that I'm sorry about tonight. Well, next time you babysit, stay home. No, no, no I mean... I'm sorry about what I said earlier. You know, when I said that you wouldn't understand. You do understand. I'm trying to. If you used to take capsules, the makers of Tylenol have just come up with something better. New extra strength Tylenol gel caps. They're gelatin coated. And compared to capsules, gel caps are 33% smaller with all that extra strength pain relief concentrated into a solid center under a smooth gelatin coating. So gel caps are actually easier to swallow. If you used to take capsules, try new extra strength Tylenol gel caps. It's not a capsule, it's better. After spending all morning at the auction, I shared the afternoon with two new treasures, a fine bone china cup and the taste of rich Swiss mocha from General Foods International Coffees. Celebrate the moments of your life. If I can't concentrate, I'm lost. So I eat a Snickers, and I know I, know I won't be hungry for at least three hours, and I can do my study, and I can go to bed. Packed with peanuts, Snickers really satisfies. Snickers really satisfies you. Next, the laughs are on wheels in the network premiere of the movie comedy Gung Ho. And tomorrow night, Empty Nest Dinah Man offers the cop. Newhart's Julia Duffy is the cover girl. And the only thing these opposites attract is trouble. In a hilarious world premiere movie, The Cover Girl and the Cop, tomorrow. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. <laughs> Kick off the Super Bowl weekend with an all-star hour of music and comedy. It's bound to be a hit. Featuring George Burns, Shelley Long, Tiffany, and the Super Bowl quarterbacks. Playing quarterback today is just inviting injury. It's like walking up to Mike Tyson and asking, how's the little woman? It's Bob Hope's Super Bowl party, Saturday. NBC News at this hour, I'm Garrett Utley. Anti-riot police crushed a demonstration for human rights in Prague, Czechoslovakia today, using tear gas and police dogs to break up the crowd. Witnesses say there were several injuries and more than 90 arrests. In Bangladesh today, a fast-moving passenger train hit a mail train head-on. At least 110 people were killed and at least 1,000 more injured in the crash about 40 miles from Dhaka. It was the worst train collision ever in Bangladesh. A Soviet magazine article has revealed that in 1984 there were more than 81,000 suicides in the Soviet Union. That same year there were 29,000 here in the U.S. Russian suicide statistics used to be considered a state secret. Times change. More news later.